Hello. My name is Eric Ginnivan, and I am a composer and percussionist with the Stanton Music Festival. This video will guide you through a brief analysis of Lou Harrison's Fugue for Percussion, giving you an idea of how it's put together and some things that you can listen for when you listen to the recording. The piece is scored for a number of typical instruments like triangles, suspended cymbal, and bass drum, but it also includes numerous atypical instruments like metallophone, meditation bells, bell coils, and a wash tub as well. This complex and unusual combination of timbres plays a major role in the piece's organization. A fugue is a short contrapuntal piece centered on the presentation, repetition, and development of a short melody called the subject. In a traditional fugue from the common practice period, the subject will typically be introduced in the home key, then move through a variety of closely related keys before returning to the home key in which it started. Working exclusively with percussion instruments, Harrison substitutes timbre relationships for this traditional key scheme. Harrison begins by establishing a timbre that is dominated by metallic instruments, then moves to a contrasting section that is characterized by drums, wood, and different metals, and then returns to the original timbre dominated by the metal instruments that began the piece. Fugue for Percussion has three main sections, an exposition, a development, and a recap. Connecting these three main sections are two short transitional episodes that do not feature statements of the subject. The piece begins with the introduction of the subject by the metallophone. It is immediately followed by another statement of the subject in the meditation bells. In this statement, the subject is stretched to now take six measures instead of four using the process of augmentation. The process of lengthening subject statements continues as the third statement appears in triangles, now eight measures long. and is followed by a fourth statement in the bell coils that is 12 measures long. Each statement of the subject is 50% longer than the previous one, and together these four statements make up the exposition as a whole. Section 2 has a very similar structure to Section 1. It uses the same process of augmentation with the same proportions. However, it changes the timbre of every statement of the subject, moving now through cowbells, break drums, gongs, claves, and bass drum. third and final section follows the same structure and even uses section 1's exact instrumentation and color sequence. However, there's a twist. The subject here is presented backwards in its retrograde form and then treated to the same series of augmentations. Harrison then takes the idea of retrograde one step further by reversing the order of all of the subject statements as well. In this new order, each of the subjects now gets progressively shorter instead of longer, undoing the process that began during the first section of the piece. 
This reversal of events from section one creates a compelling symmetry and overall sense of balance between the outer sections of the overall form. This symmetry is also reflected in the structure of the episodes that connect the three main sections of the piece, as episode two is actually episode one played in reverse as well. Together, these relationships create a palindrome structure around the central development section. Now that you know a bit about how the piece is put together, here are some things to listen for when you hear the recording. Most importantly, listen for statements of the subject. See if you can identify when the subject moves from one color to a new color or timbre throughout the piece. As you follow the subject from one instrument to another, also listen for the process of augmentation that shapes the subject and creates the impression of it getting longer and longer over the course of each section. Finally, at the end of the piece, see if you can identify when you are hearing the subject in its retrograde or backwards form. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video leads you to a deeper and more engaging hearing of Lou Harrison's Fugue for Percussion.